to introduce Bach at Trinity, a year-long celebration of the complete organ works of Johann Sebastian Bach and of the 40th anniversary of the terrific Metzler organ here at Trinity College, Cambridge. The organ is renowned not only across the UK, but around the world, and is regarded by many as the finest organ in this country for performing the organ works of Bach. Bach at Trinity, which runs from October 2016 to June 2017, is a series comprising 23 concerts given by some of the country's finest professionals, students from London conservatoires, and many organ scholars from across the University of Cambridge. We do hope that you'll be able to join us for as many concerts in the series as possible, particularly the opening and closing concerts on the 8th of October 2016 and the 3rd of June 2017. But should you be unable to join us, you'll be able to listen live on the Trinity College Choir website or catch up after each concert. Well, the organ at Trinity is, I think it's my favourite organ in the whole of the UK. I mean, there are lots of wonderful organs uh, in this country. But if I had to choose one to take with me to a desert island, I think it would be Trinity. Um, I have recorded two um, discs of organ music by Jazz Bach, and I'm in fact about uh, to record another one um, there. And I keep coming back to the Metzler. I think I thought I would just make one disc. Um, I had made a disc at, uh, on the fantastic Fabelius organ at Queen's College here in Oxford, um, a disc of trio sonatas, because I wanted that to be in a sort of smaller acoustical space and, um, and the organ there is very well suited to it. Then I was going to record some free works and, and, and some earlier chorale-based pieces by Bach, and the Metzler Trinity was absolutely ideal for that. And since then, I haven't been able to think of another organ, in the UK at least, that I want to record on. And um, it is so tremendously rewarding um, to listen to, but also to play. It's so responsive, um, and the sound is the perfect balance really between warmth and clarity. Um, it's very easy to get across what you want to say in the, the music, the way you you want to um, articulate your, th your, your thoughts about the music. The, the, um, it, it, it comes across clearly, but the sound itself is voluptuous and warm. And the building helps with that, but it's a really very special instrument and a unique sound, I think. I was an undergraduate here in 1975, and I remember this organ being put in. And it's quite important to remember that in the early uh, 70s, the Cambridge organ scene was very different from what it is now. The organ reform movement had just begin, begun to make an impact in, in Cambridge, so you had uh, quite interesting new uh, tracker action, light wind pressure organs, one installed by Noel Mander at Jesus College, I remember, and a much more uncompromising Werk Prinzip organ that had been put in by the German builder von Beckerath. Uh, in Clare, and that organ uh, is still there, it's a very well engineered organ, but they, they were all essentially modernist organs, they were, they were kind of versions of Baroque organs in, in, in packing crate technology, so, so, so as it looks now. The, the, the extraordinary thing about this organ was first of all that it was a rebuild, uh, the Swiss company Metzler came in, they were using pipework from uh, the old organ and uh, putting it in the context of a, a new uh, Baroque organ scheme. Uh, uh, but the other thing was just the impact that the sound made when the whole thing was uh, put in place. The case had shrunk, uh, Metzler's reproportioned the case to what it, much more what it had been in the uh, late 17th, early 18th centuries. But they also tuned the organ uh, in a way that was uh, unusual and fresh to English ears. I mean, I, I was, as everybody was used to uh, organs in a dead pan, uh, e equal temperament, and this was slightly unequal. It might have been Meister, one of those temperaments, and that was a real uh, innovation because the organ simply sounded different. And uh, although I couldn't quite pin it down, I mean, the voicing was so subtle uh, and, and, and new. Um, but it was the, 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 the tuning was really the, the, the thing one, one sort of was aware of subliminally, and then gradually we, we learnt uh, what, yeah, what had actually happened here, which was really the creation of an entirely uh, uh, new but very important um, moment in British organ building. The Metzler replaced a rather larger four-manual instrument by Harrison and Harrison in the English Romantic style. This organ, which had been gradually enlarged over the previous hundred years or so, had started to become increasingly unreliable 
by the late 1960s, and it was decided by the then director of music, the late Dr. Richard Marlowe, that a new organ was needed for the college. The Swiss firm Metzler were decided as the firm to take on the build, and their starting point for the organ was the original casework from the 17th century, and also the Father Smith pipework from the 1694 and 1708 organs. These seven ranks, which remain on the organ today, are undoubtedly some of the most beautiful on the instrument. My first encounter with the Metzler uh, must have been on recordings. Uh, Richard Marlowe made a fantastic series of recordings in, in the uh, 80s and 90s, and I remember a disc of music by William Walton, um, and hearing, I think for the first time, this very brilliant and, and powerful sound from the organ, unlike the kinds of instruments that one would usually associate with that sort of 20th century British repertoire. And then when I came up to Cambridge, I was always scholar at King's, um, but uh, my now wife was a choral scholar at uh, Trinity, and uh, in the early days of our relationship I used to come courting, and uh, I would go up to the organ loft at Trinity and pull stops for the organ scholars, um, Chris Alsop and Andrew Lamb were the organ scholars then, and um, I uh, spent quite a lot of time, very early on in my time at Cambridge, hearing um, the Metzler in an accompanimental role, really more than a solo role, um, which I think it does rather brilliantly, um, just because of the sheer beauty of the sound, really. Um, the other thing I was aware of was that um, the organ um, at Trinity and I are of exactly the same vintage because we were both born in 1976. So I've always rather liked the idea of uh, um, recording, performing on an instrument that uh, started life at the same time as I did. Although, of course, um, unlike me, there are components of uh, the Trinity organ which are a good deal older. Um, and it, again, it's rather nice when recording Bach to think that um, Father Smith was putting pipes in and uh, voicing in, in that building um, when Bach was a, a child, I think, is it 1692, some of the, the pipe work of the, um, of the Father Smith organ. Um, so it's, um, it's kind of uh, um, a, a sweet idea that the seven-year-old Bach was, uh, was um, well, probably practising um, in, uh, where was he at that stage, in Eisenach. Um, while Smith was voicing and finishing um, those pipes which are, are still in use today. It's obvious as a listener that when you're hearing this organ, it's telling a story that no other organ tells you, certainly in this city and possibly in the whole country. Now, why might this be? It's an organ that was built at a time when um, the United Kingdom was looking abroad for instruments and those instruments had a strongly Baroque orientation. So this is one of the first organs that was made in a historic style, not just a reinterpretation of Baroque sound ideals and action and winding, uh, recased in a modern concept, but actually using historic cases and historic pipework uh, as a basis for the instrument. As I say, the instrument refers very strongly to continental models. And the Swiss firm of Metzler, who designed and built the organ, did it under the guidance of a Dutch organ consultant, Bernard Edskes. And therefore, the instrument has a very strongly Dutch continental and perhaps northern European accent. Well, it's a terrific pleasure and, and really a privilege to be able to do these recordings um, here at Trinity. Um, it's a wonderful instrument. I can't think of a, a better instrument um, in, in England, really. To, to do a project like this, a uh, combination of, of an instrument of a certain size, but um, more than that, of um, a really wonderful musicality and of a type which Bach would have known, um, broadly speaking. And um, I think the, the thing that makes this organ so special is it, it, the beauty of sound and the, the quality of the, of the voicing. Um, it's an organ which makes you play well. In fact, it kind of tells you how to play uh, the repertoire you're playing. Um, I always think of it as um, and any really great organ as a bit like a, a something like a thoroughbred racehorse that um, provided you sit on and give a few little nudges, the instrument kind of does the rest. Um, that's the kind of quality. And so that makes it a real pleasure that you just sit here and 
and sort of find your way through uh, while the instrument tells you how it would like to be played. And um, combination of that and such great music is nothing but a pleasure, really.